talked about a real interesting topic, and that was hydrolyzed protein. So what does it mean like when you talk about hydrolyzed protein? Basically, you're essentially taking, whether it's whey, whether it's casein, uh, some people ask about other types of proteins, it doesn't matter the protein, you take the protein and you sort of pre-digest it with enzymes. So, <clears throat> what is that? that? That hydrolyzes the protein. And when you hydrolyze the protein, what happens is, say if you have like a whole protein, you break down individual amino acids. When you hydrolyze a protein, sometimes you get uh, two amino acids bound to each other, sometimes three amino acids bound to each other, sometimes four. And basically those are dipeptides, tripeptides, right? Uh, and what happens is that when you look at your gut, you, you have transports, a single amino acid could go through, but you have transports that transport dipeptides, right? Um, three amino acids at once, right? Tripeptides. So if you have one amino acid going at once, or if you have three going on at once, or two going at once, the uptake is much faster. So if you pre-digest it, uptake's much faster. So that's the first thing we found that we talked about in our Muscle PhD Academy. The question is, does that matter? Well, I didn't really, we didn't show this, but if you have, for example, um, uh, if we take whey protein, which is like the standard, and you compare the two, you get a little bit faster digestion with whey. If you took casein, for example, you get a lot faster digestion of casein. It, it would act more similar to a whey protein instead of a casein. It loses slow digesting properties. So basically what you see is, you see that um, what are its impact on muscle mass? Not much. So even though the speed of digestion increases with the whey, you don't see much difference in muscle mass. Chris Lockwood found that. Um, other researchers have found that with protein synthesis. So what, what, what's the point? Like why would you get hydrolyzed whey? It's way more expensive. And, and why wouldn't it increase protein synthesis if amino acid levels go up higher? Well, think about protein synthesis as like a threshold, okay? So here's your threshold. You gotta get above that threshold in blood levels to turn on protein synthesis. So if this is normal whey, and this is hydrolyzed whey, both are hitting that threshold and peak. <clears throat> what does that mean? It means basically that going above that more isn't going to help. Now, a real cool study by Chris Lockwood and Mike Roberts, basically, is they took, um, Hydrolyzed whey compared to normal whey. No differences in strength, no differences in muscle hypertrophy. But guess what? They had lower body fat over the hydrolyzed whey than the actual normal whey. So let me repeat that. More body fat loss with the hydrolyzed whey than the normal whey. You gotta be thinking to yourself, like, I don't understand. What if, I can understand if there's more protein since it's more muscle that's driving the fat loss response. But why would they have more fat loss if that's not the case? Here's the deal, what happens. In your gut, you release hormones, okay? They're, they're peptide hormones. And basically what ends up happening is this. There's a hormone uh, called GLP-1, glucagon-like glucagon peptide 1. And these peptides that are in hydrolyzed whey stimulate the release of these peptides, glucagon-like peptide 1. GLP-1 increases uh, satiety, improves insulin signaling, improves insulin sensitivity. So that's critical because all those things lead to lower body fat. More satiety, more insulin sensitivity leads to more of a lean phenotype. So that's what we think is going on with the hydrolyzed whey. So if someone's prepping for a contest, if someone just loses, wants to lose fat, we'd recommend spending that extra price point for hydrolyzed whey. In contrast, if you're already super lean already, you don't really need to lose fat. Your primary goal is maybe muscle. Maybe it's not as important. Um, if you're insulin resistant, um, you don't handle carbs well, definitely talk about using that as well. Now the other thing that we did find is what's gonna determine whether you use hydrolyzed whey is going to be the frequency that you train. <clears throat> if you train every body part once a week, hydrolyzed whey is not gonna make as much a difference. But one of the studies that we showed basically found that when you take hydrolyzed whey, you recover much quicker than if you took normal whey. Probably because it's speeding glycogen replenishment, like replenishment of carb stores and things of that nature. So what that means is that if you train maybe every body part three times a week, 
uh, or some people train it every day, but at least three times a week, you hydrolyze whey post-workout is going to be beneficial. If you don't train that frequently, maybe twice a, a week, maybe not as beneficial. So, take home messages with hydrolyzed whey, helps to lose fat. If you're insulin resistant, we'll help you with insulin sensitivity. If you, if you train very frequently, we recommend taking that around the workout to save costs. Maybe every other time is just normal food, normal whey protein. Last thing we talked about was Dr. Joey Antonio's research. Now, everyone talks about like, how much protein do I need? And, and typically what we're talking about is like, take a guy like me, about a buck 80, to a buck 85, 5'8", buck 80, uh, buck 85, okay? If you had a gram of protein per pound of body weight, um, you're talking about me having about 180 grams of protein. So they did a, Joey did a study where uh, um, basically he compared around that amount, maybe 165 to 180 grams of protein. We would consider that the RDA is 0.8 grams per kilogram. So for a guy like me, you know, you're talking about like not much at all, okay? Um, you know, I might be getting 80 grams of protein a day. So if I'm having 160, 180, it's clearly far above the RDA. Now, uh, when you actually go to um, what Joey did, he took a group and gave them around 255 to 260 grams of protein compared to 165 to 180 grams of protein. So you have very high amounts, that's about 1.5 per, per pound for me compared to the normal. What did they find? Basically, they found that they gained probably closer to the, around the same amount of muscle, maybe a little bit more in the high protein group, but the high protein group lost a lot more fat. And so that's to us very interesting. So basically it shows that like if you're trying to diet down, increasing your protein a lot could help you lose fat. Now I'm gonna warn you on this. There's some unpublished data by, by Tipton's lab, um, basically. And what Tipton found is that when you give uh, when you give a high amount of protein over a long amount of time, you do adapt to that. So if you were 260 and you went back down to like 170, you might actually lose some muscle. So think about it. When you train, you don't always lift heavy, right? Sometimes you lift moderate. Sometimes you lift light. Likely with your protein intake, it could be somewhat similar. You likely want to periodize it. You might go through a month, I want to lose a lot of fat. You might up your protein a lot. So Andy, for example, last year put on... <laughs> Probably what, like you probably put on like twenty pounds. Uh, from the time I got here until about three months ago, I put on about fifteen pounds. Fifteen pounds, but he lost. Like he got it was lean. He might have lost fat, and he upped his protein to <laughs> it, probably higher yeah. than Doctor Antonio. Would you up your protein to? Uh, I was around four hundred grams a day. Four hundred <laughs> grams a day, and Andy's probably around my size and height. So, uh, but it worked for him. He put on muscle, and he didn't gain fat. Everything that we kind of think about it is, say you come out of a contest, it's almost impossible. Joey's data also showed it's almost impossible to store protein as fat. So think about it. You step out of a contest, and you're, you might gain a lot of fat coming out of the contest, but what if you first start by upping your calories from protein? Harder to store fat. So guys, that's the end of kind of the overview of the Muscle PHC Academy, and we're going to go ahead and probably take maybe about five questions. And... Um, and and if you guys are on Facebook, the questions that you do post after, we will go back and respond to. So go ahead, hit me up, guys. So is beef protein isolate as effective as whey protein isolate? Great question. Is beef protein isolate as effective as whey? Um, <clears throat> if you had like 40 grams of beef and 40 grams of, of whey, they'd be just as effective. In fact, our lab found that. We gave 40 grams. It might have been 44. It's 40 to 44 grams of whey versus beef. In fact, that study just got accepted. It's headed up by Matt Sharp, but it just but we found no differences. But in contrast, if you had like like uh, 20 grams of whey versus 20 grams of beef, uh, the whey might be a little bit more effective because you're getting uh, hot, you have more loosing in the whey. But at like 30, 40 grams, both of them have hit that optimal loosing threshold. So again, if you're dieting and you have less calories, the whey could be better. Um, but if you had the, but at higher levels, and this is, remember this beef isolate. If you're talking about whole beef, when it's slower digesting, there could be some advantages of whey over the whole beef. But isolate beef, uh, that might uh, be at higher levels, there's probably no difference. So, someone's asking, um, the big question we keep getting is how much whey do you, is 
How much what? Whey protein is uh, around 11% leucine. You need about two to three grams of leucine to maximize protein synthesis. So whey you're talking 20, really as low as 17 grams, but anywhere from 17 to 30 grams of whey for a guy my size. And granted, you got a guy like Ben Pakolsky, instead of 17, he's starting at 30, more like 45. So, but for a guy my size, around 180 pounds, uh, you're probably talking about 20 to 30 grams of maximized whey protein is your spot. On muscle. So, different, uh, big question is different types of protein. So, is it better to mix like a whey, a casein, a hydrolyzed protein together post-workout or just stick to a whey, just stick to a hydrolyzed? Great questions. The advantage of having whole whey is that some of the, some of the proteins in whey have really positive effects on health, immune function. Um, and, and so, you know, that's very important. What we call, we call, we think of whey as almost like a functional supplement, a functional food. It has functions beyond protein synthesis. And those functions are tied to the protein content of that whey. When you hydrolyze it, even though it might have uh, certain benefits like gut peptides, you might lose some of those health benefits, in which case, um, but you also got to remember with whey, it's only partly hydrolyzed. The whole thing is not hydrolyzed or it tastes very, very bitter. So, um, so it's actually kind of a mixture of hydrolyzed and not hydrolyzed already. So as far as mixing it with something like casein, um, you know, there's one study that kind of indicates that can be beneficial, but I'm not sure that you get an advantage of one over just having one. One study does show possible advantage, but I'm not seeing like that much of a benefit. One thing I am gonna tell you is this though, a combination of proteins throughout the day Various proteins have various nutrients that are going to be very beneficial. For example, beef is going to be high in iron, right? It's going to be high in zinc. Whey is going to have certain immune properties. So uh, those are that's another reason to get a variety of proteins. And uh, I'm just going to answer a question really quickly. Uh, we keep getting a question about um, gluten intolerance and whey protein. So basically, you can find whey proteins that don't have gluten in them um, because whey is derived from milk. Um, milk doesn't contain gluten. Yep. Um, however, a lot of some of the fillers that pro, that companies use have gluten in them. So if you're worried about the gluten, then make sure you look at the label and it'll say gluten free because gluten is an allergen. Great, great um, point. So the next, um, a lot of people are asking about how does um, it apply to keto? Wait, hydrolyzed whey in keto. I was just talking about this with Ryan Lowry the other day, and <clears throat> to be honest, guys, we need so much more research on keto. I know, I've got, I get a lot of people DMing me and Facebook messaging me, and basically their, their thing is that, look, uh, you, know, you know, I'm a researcher, what, what should I do with my career? Guys, look, our lab's doing a lot of work with ketogenic dieting and performance. Jeff Bullock's lab's doing a lot of work on ketogenic dieting and performance. Dom is doing a lot of the clinical research, but he's also doing some of the performance. Beach is doing some of the stuff with exogenous ketones. Uh, Mike Roberts is doing stuff, but besides that, most of it's clinical. So if you're someone out there who wants to make a career, go look at what happens with hydrolyzed whey and ketogenic diet. We have one study we do with Mike Roberts where we found that branched chain amino acids actually rose up higher in the blood when in ketosis than when not in ketosis. I suspect the same is similar with hydrolyzed whey. I suspect you would get the same positive benefits with hydrolyzed whey over something else. So um, that's what I'm thinking right now, but of course we need studies to find out. Protein intake in keto is a big question that keeps coming up, and I know we've talked about that extensively. <clears throat> Great. Here's the thing. Um, what I will say is this. You don't want to go below, for muscle building, 1.6 grams per kilogram body weight. So you don't want to go below 1.6 grams per kilogram body weight. Once you get above that, uh, there may be times where it might bump you out of ketosis. Um, what anecdotally, I hate to say this because we don't have the data, when you start to fall, fall below, like for, for, like for me for example, 70 to 75% fat, 20 25% protein, or 1.6 grams per kg of protein, I stay in ketosis just fine. When I start going to where like um, 30, 35% protein, I do start to fall off, but in the same token, if you want to get your protein up, 
you need to increase your ketogenic fat. You might be able to get away with having higher protein intakes if you have more MCTs, more coconut oil in your diet, and possibly supplement with like exogenous ketones. Um, you may be able to get your protein up to like 30, 35%. One of the things our lab wants to do over the next year is start looking at a protein threshold. What is that protein threshold and when do you fall out? The other thing we also find, and, and I, I mean, I think Andy would attest to this, but when you intermittent fast, it seems like you get your protein up higher and not fall out as much. The higher your meal frequency is, it seems you kind of fall out a little bit faster with higher protein. So I hope that helps. Um, big question. Uh, actually, it was a comment that was made. Um, it said, the, the comment said that during ketosis, the leucine threshold is lower. Can you <clears throat> elaborate on that? Good question. So, um, during ketosis, again, like we teamed with Mike Roberts, and we found that leucine rise up higher in the blood. We also know that ketones spare leucine. Even though it rises up higher in the blood, we don't know how that translates to protein synthesis, but um, we can hypothesize that the leucine threshold is indeed lower. We know insulin sensitivity is also higher. So probably, I would say yes, and mean that you could be probably fully fine with 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight. Good question. Any more burning question, guys? Yeah, we'll get one, one to two more questions. Or we'll so, shut it down. Um, the superhero maker is here? Hey, superhero maker, <laughs> great. Prize and Dwarf, what's up, my man? Um, lactose sensitivity and whey, switch, pro switch protein sources, sources or avoid. Lactose sensitive, well sometimes there are like, um, there are certain ways that like they're able to filter out all of the lactose. I would stick with that. If you still have problems, maybe it's a certain protein fraction that, that you're having issues with. But that's what I would say. Try and get one that's filtered out, uh, you know, a, a isolated, isolate way that's filtered that all out. That'd be my answer to that. Um, I love